Hi, this is John from Sysenge Click. Today I'm going to show you some of the most basic IP tables filter rules. These rules will allow loopback traffic and traffic that has already been established. These rules are fundamental to almost any IP tables filter rule set. So I've showed you the current rule set right now. We see from last time that we set the default policy on all the chains to drop. Then we added a rule to allow all traffic leaving the firewall or coming into the firewall. But that's not really any better than not having a firewall, so I'd like to remove these rules and start tailoring the firewall more closely. We'll start by allowing all loopback traffic. Loopback traffic never leaves the machine, and so there's almost never a reason to block it. But since our default policy is to drop traffic, we need to allow the loopback traffic. To do this, we're going to add a rule in both the incoming and, outco and outgoing chains to accept this traffic. So, in the input table, we append the rule, accept the traffic, and the incoming interface is LO. That's the loopback interface. Same thing for the output chain, but we're going to make it dash O for the outgoing interface. Okay, well, that didn't really help us see our rules because we're not showing very verbose output. So let's expand the list viewing command just a bit. We're going to add dash n, dash v, and dash dash line numbers. This is going to show us numbers instead of names, give us more verbose output, and show the rule number in the chain. This is helpful when we want to place a rule in a particular position or to remove a rule. So, now that we can see that, we can differentiate between our two rules. We see our default allow rule is rule number one, and that's really the only one being checked right now, because once you get to the accept target, no more rules are checked. So, we're going to change that and remove these rules shortly, so that we don't have overly broad rules anymore. So, that's great that we have a lot of loopback traffic, but that was really only because of our default drop policy. For the kind of network track we're really interested in, we need to use connection tracking states. Linux does this for us, but we have to add some rules to IP tables to take advantage of it. So let's see how to add connection tracking rules. We're going to do IP tables, appending it to the particular chain. We're going to accept the traffic. We're going to load the module connection tracker. And the connection tracking state should be established, comma, related. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the output chain. And now we can see these connection tracking rules. And since our current S8 session was already allowed by the firewall, it's being checked by the connection tracker. So now we can remove those default rules. To do that, we do IP tables D for delete the chain we want to delete from, and the rule number. So we'll delete the first rule in both chains. And now we can see all we have is our accepting loopback traffic and our related established rule. And we can see there's already traffic going to these rules because the packets and the bytes counters have incremented. So that's the basics of firewall rules we'll be able to do. Next time, I'll show you some more rules allowing specific traffic into the firewall. Catch you next time.